Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.7.10, an Eagle Dynamics FA-18C Hornet module. Welcome to tutorial 8, Unguided Bombs. Today we're going to take a look at the unguided uh, low drag and high drag bombs. I actually have the low drag ones loaded on the aircraft, but the, the high drag um, method of operation is the same. Um, on the aircraft right now, I have all three types of standard unguided low drag bomb uh, on the aircraft. I've got Mark 82s, Mark 83s, and Mark 84s. Uh, now, on the wing stations here, uh, on wing stations 8, 7, 3, and 2, you'll see that uh, I've got um, Mark 84s on the inners, on pylon 7 and 3, and on the outers, or, yeah, the outer pylons, the outer wing pylons, uh, pylons 8 and 2, I've got BRU-33 racks, and loaded onto those I have two Mark 83s each. And uh, then on the centre line, on station 5, I've got a single BRU-33 with two Mark 82s. And just to go over those different types, uh, Mark 82 is the standard 500 pound general purpose bomb, Mark 83 is the standard general purpose 1000 pound bomb, and the Mark 84 is the general purpose standard 2000 pound bomb. Now, uh, the Mark 82 also has high drag variants. Uh, these are the Snake Eye, which have a balut in the rear, uh, and also the Mark 82 Yankee, which is a version that uses a parachute. Uh, as its retardation device. Um, you can carry the BRU-33 rack on the centre line or individual Mark 83s or Mark 84s, uh, and on the inner and outer wing stations you can either carry singles of the Mark uh, 83 or Mark 84, or you can carry BRU racks of Mark 82s or Mark 83s. Uh, Mark 84s can only be carried singly. Uh, and only on the wing stations. So, that's the whole uh, possible series of loadouts. Uh, like I said, I've got the three standard types of uh, low drag variants loaded on the aircraft now. So, let's jump inside the aircraft and let's see how we set up these weapons. Uh, if I take a little look down at the left hand DDI, let's go Menu and then stores page. We can see the standard stores page here. It's confirming to us two Mark 82s on the center line, single Mark 84s on the inners, and double Mark 83s on the outers. Uh, and we get the profiles, as always, across the top of the stores page. Uh, 83B for 83 bomb, uh, 84, and 82B as well. Uh, so, actually, no, it's not B for bomb, it's B for BRU. Apologies. So that's just to confirm that it's actually on a rack, on a BRU-33 uh, rack. Um, so if, if, for example, we choose the 84s, uh, we can see that we get a whole load of information on the stores management page about what kind of a release we're going to do with these bombs. Uh, we have the mode, which can be CCIP or CCRP. That's a constantly computed impact point or constantly computed release point. Uh, you have the mechanical fuse, which defaults to off. You have the electronic fuse, which defaults to off. Drag, which can be free fall or high drag, and you've got quantities, multiples, and intervals uh, if you have um, anything other than the quantity and the multiples equal. So, for example, uh, let's just go through how we create one of these profiles. Uh, you can have multiple profiles for any given bomb, by the way. This is currently pro uh, program number one. Sorry, you can have multiple programs per profile. The profiles are listed across the top, the programs are listed. Uh, in the bottom of the screen here. So if I press the program button, I can cycle program one, program two, three, four, five, and then back to one. Uh, five is uh, jet, uh, defaulting to a manual release mode, which is uh, a backup mode used when there's something wrong with your mission computer, basically. So we're gonna have a uh, program number one, which will be CCIP. Uh, we can press M fuse and we can choose nose in the case of the Mark 84. So the bombs are now no longer in safe, they're now in nose fusing. Electronic fuse has options for instantaneous or a delay in this version of the bomb. We're gonna choose instantaneous. And uh, the, the drag mode, um, 
for this particular bomb is is free fall. We're, we don't have an ability to change that. There is no other drag mode for anything other than the Mark 82s. So that's that's fine. And we can press UFC and we can then get the quantity multiples and intervals set up here on the UFC. So we'd have the option if we press quantity to do quantity of two multiples of one and then we could set an interval and you know say we could have something like 30 feet that's all now confirmed in that program quantity two multiple one 30 feet and we can then cycle to a second program and for the second program we'll do uh nose and instantaneous again and for this one we'll leave it quantity one multiple one and uh, so that gives you an ability to pre-program some different releases we're actually going to do the same for program number one it's actually going to be quantity one multiples of one uh, but we're going to change program number two to be CCRP, uh, which is actually listed here as auto. So there we go. Uh, so we now have two programs set up for these bombs for the Mark 84s. Program one is CCIP, program two is automatic, which is the CCRP program. Uh, the other bombs all work in exactly the same way, with the difference being that the 82s uh, would have an option to change the drag mode if you actually had the drag kit installed. Uh, it's possible even with the high drag bombs to drop them in a low drag mode. Um, but anyway, we're going to leave these with the default settings, quantity 1, multiple 1, CCIP. I'm going to use the 84s to demonstrate both CCIP and CCRP. Okay, I'm going to get the aircraft in the air. I'll see you all once we're on, way on our way to the range. Okay, you join us back in the cockpit on our way towards the target. Uh, let's go ahead and get the aircraft set up for our first release. We're first going to drop the Mark 84 in CCIP, and we're then going to follow up by dropping it in CCRP, otherwise known as automatic. So let's get the aircraft in air to ground mode. Let's select the 84 profile. You can see we're on program two, which was the last one we edited. Let's cycle programs until we get back to program one, which is CCIP. Let's go master arm on. We can then confirm that the 84 profile show is ready. It no longer has the cross through it and arm is confirmed in the center of the SMS. If we now take a little look up at the HUD, we'll see we've got some new symbology. Uh, it confirms CCIP mode on the right hand side of the HUD. And then we have the DIL, which is the displayed impact line. Uh, this is the direction from the flight path marker to where the bombs will fall. Uh, when we're in a dive, at the end of this line there'll be a cross. That's the CCIP cross, that's where the bombs will impact if we press uh, the pickle button at that moment. When the cross is not inside the view of the HUD, we instead get a line. And the distance from that line to the bottom of the HUD is how much more line is actually below the HUD. So if we take this amount, that would mean the actual gun cross, sorry, the actual CCIP cross is kind of down here right now. So we should be diving towards the target to get that in view. Let's come out of active pause and uh, make our way towards the target. Uh, oh, and also note that we have a pull-up queue, which is this uh, set of lines on the DIL with wings. Uh, once the flight path marker gets below that point, uh, the, the system will give you the pull-up queue, warning you that it's time to bug out. So I'm going to dive down towards our uh, target area. It's actually kind of more over here. I don't want to go too fast in the dive. Okay, let's nose over. I'm wanting to get one of these white buildings here, this warehouse, so I'm going to put the line on it, wait for the cross, push and hold pickle, I get a flashing line confirming bomb is off, and I pull away. And if we hit F6, oh, that was very quick, if we hit F6 that was a direct hit. So that's how you do it in CCIP mode, let's uh, claim away from that target now, and let's advance program to program number two, and this one is auto. You'll see on the right hand side here it confirms auto to us. So uh, in this mode we um, we need uh, a sensor point of interest um, because it needs a fixed point to calculate the, automa the automatic release against. Now we could use the radar and define a point on the ground using the radar. We could use our targeting pod or if we press sensor select switch up we can actually set the HUD as the sensor of interest and we get what's called the ball and chain. 
So we could now uh, place um, this this ball, this circular thing with the dot in the middle, on our target and depress TDC, and that would give us a target location that we could drop against. So I'm going to maneuver towards these buildings over here. I'm going to put my ball and chain on one of these buildings and depress TDC. And you can see I've got a diamond right on that target. And I have what's called the ASL, uh, which is the um, azimuth steering line. So I'm actually going to fly away from the target just now uh, and get us uh, some decent distance from it so I can do a proper approach. You can see now range to the target is confirmed on the right hand side of the HUD. We also have confirmed auto and AGR. AGR confirms that we're using the radar for ranging towards that target location. Uh, and so while we're in AGR mode, the air to ground radar display is blanked. It's not actually doing normal scans. Uh, the other symbology on the HUD is normal, uh, and just to confirm that the HUD is sensor of interest, we have a dot inside the flight path marker. Now I'm going to fly out to about 7 nautical miles and then come back around. Uh, note that when we're inbound, we need to get the flight path marker on the horizon and passing through the ASL. We need to be very, very accurate with that, because otherwise the bomb will not come off. If the system detects too much of an error, too much of a steering error, uh, then it won't actually enable the release of the bomb. So we're going to come around now. We passed 7 nautical miles. I'm going to uh, keep turning. There we go. We've got the angle off indicator at the top of the HUD. 50 degrees, 40, 30, 20, 10. That's us facing the target. Going to get the flight path marker stabilized on the horizon and get the ASL going through it. And you'll then see that on the right hand side of the HUD, we have seconds until release. 30, 30 seconds to go. And the whole time I want to make sure that my ASL is going right through that flight path marker. You want it to be as close to the dot in the middle as possible. Once we get to 10 seconds, I'm going to press and hold the pickle. I'm going to keep the pickle held until I get confirmation of the bomb release. 10 seconds, pickle is pressed, and I continue maintaining my ASL. Line is coming down the ASL. We have release, and now we have time to impact. So I can hit F6, and let's see how close do we get with it. This is a £2,000 bomb, remember. That does look very much like the uh, the target I designated. Let's see what happens. Boom! Right on target. Excellent. So, that was CCIP and CCRP. Uh, we can go ahead and select the Mark 82s, uh, and you'll see that the, the way that the system works is exactly the same. There's no difference at all between uh, the 82s and the 84s. Uh, note that if you have any wrong settings, it will show DUD on the right-hand side of the HUD to confirm that the weapon would not work uh, in its current setting. And for us, that's because the, the mechanical fuse was off and the E-fuse was also off. So we want to set those. And now the DUD queue disappears. And I could, if I wanted to, go ahead and drop one of those Mark 82s. Boom, just like that. So, I hope you all enjoyed that. That's the basic employment of unguided dumb munitions in CCIP and CCRP, otherwise known as auto modes. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment, and I'll see you all next time.